Thank you. Good evening. My name is Philip Kirikoff, and tonight I'm going to share an eight-year journey to fundamentally redefine failure. In 2004, I co-founded the Failure Club with a group of friends to, profound, to test out a radical theory. What if you could take all the negative associations with failure, the fear of failure, and replace it with something that was genuinely fun, fulfilling, and inspiring? Now, the club has a very simple structure. Seven to 10 members each take on a project that's so audacious, it's nearly impossible, yet still attainable within that one year. And there's a specific measurable goal that everyone can agree was either achieved or not. It's a pass-fail, a binary gate, if you will. The group meets every two to three weeks with the intention of, of covering all the objectives, all the challenges, all the hurdles that are being faced. And that creates, <laughs> it creates a healthy competition to see who can fail biggest, hardest, and fastest. <laughs> and in that process, your goal is to, <laughs> to fail on stage. So what we say in Failure Club is success is what we let ourselves settle for when we're afraid to fail at something that's truly life-defining. It's comfort, it's justification, it's often disappointing, and it's always short-lived. Failure, on the other hand, can be incredibly liberating if you know how to play the game. My project that first year was to create a $10 million venture capital fund in, for, in one year, and I failed because it took me three. Now, during that time, I also met Morgan Spurlock. And he was so enamored with this idea that he set out to create a show, a documentary style show about the Failure Club, which we would follow seven to 10 members of our Failure Club pursuing their dream goals. So we have Meg, who's our comedian, and she, frankly, at the beginning of the year was not that funny, but, <laughs> and she had debilitating stage fright. But her goal is to do a 20 minute paid set in front of 200 people. Gina is 55 years old, hasn't been on a horse since she's 14, and her goal is to win a blue ribbon in an equestrian jumping competition. <laughs> Ignacio is challenging the New York fashion industry by launching a capsule collection and opening a men's haberdashery. Liz took, she took a, a severance package from a Fortune 500 company to start a, men's, uh, a handyman business with a goal of 10,000 customers in the first year. Elizabeth is passionate for Christmas. You actually heard her song earlier. Her goal is to create a, a record a Christmas song that's a top 10 downloads on iTunes. And Eric, who had no mechanical skills to speak of, is building a motorcycle from scratch with the goal of doing a cross-country ride. And finally, Jess has a catering business, creating a catering business with 100 gigs in the first year, which is nearly one every three days. So I can tell you the year ends October 1, and I'm going to leave you with some suspense about how they're doing. But I can tell you that they've each achieved results that are far greater than what they thought possible. Meg, for example, performed at Amateur Night at the Apollo, and Elizabeth shot a music video in Times Square. But more important than their goals is that they've fundamentally rewired how they approach the world. And what they've realized is that the obstacles that we allow ourselves to be stopped by, time, money, education, expertise, are all self-imposed. And when you wipe those out, anything is possible. I take on a new Failure Club project every year, and in the last five years, I've completed uh, Ironman Triathlon, I've summited Mount Kilimanjaro, I've co-hosted a show with Morgan Spurlock, made a bottle of wine, and my project this year is to create an international mountain bike race in Haiti. So let's talk about your goals. If you were to join the Failure Club today, what would that, what, what's on your someday list that you would like to get off of that someday list? It could be anything, academic, athletic, but imagine that there's just something that you've always wanted to do in your life. Now you have that list, and imagine that tomorrow when you turn the page, it's not Thursday, but it's actually someday. What is on that someday list that you would like to get off? What would be at the top? The challenge, of course, is that you cannot do this alone. When was the last time you actually performed or accomplished your New Year's resolution? You need a team, you need a structure. Fortunately, Failure Club provides that. There's existing Failure Clubs all around the globe, and if, you can always start your own. There's also a Failure Club app that we're creating that allows you to set your goals, create milestones, and share with friends and social networks. That, all of this is for free on the Failure Club website. But the most important thing that Failure Club teaches is urgency, that today is someday. And And not to end on a sour note, but someday is a double-edged sword. And it would be the greatest tragedy of all would be to end, to never have taken the first step towards your dream goal before you have no more steps to take. Thank you, and happy failing.